Um, good afternoon and welcome to Morris Federation online event. Uh, my name is Pauline Woods Wilson, the current president of the Morris Federation. And today we have Richard Nelson, who's going to tell you all about his research into Morris dancing in the Trafford area. So over to you, Richard. Right, I'm Richard Nelson. Uh, I welcome you all to, to this presentation. Um, as you see there, I dance with a number of Morris sides. Uh, Bolin is a border side. Used to be a northwest side and did border in the winter. Uh, Lim is Lim. It's uh, a northwest dance, uh, which we only do three times. I chose this image uh, to grace the cover of the book. It's a uh, linotype and machinery uh, Morris team. Linotype was the biggest employer in the Altrincham area. Uh, it had a, a, a large social club. It, this is actually taken at its football ground, which is no longer there, unfortunately. Uh, it's a good quality photograph. It shows signs of success, as you can see along the bottom. Um, these were trophies won at carnivals in the Trafford area and, and beyond. Uh, it's a mixed team, as many, uh, all the Altrincham teams were. Uh, not all the teams in Trafford were, but all the Altrincham teams were. This one looks as though it's been a bit hastily assembled. It, it doesn't seem to be a full complement of dancers there. And one or two of them have, have got bits of unit, bits of outfit which are not quite the same as others if you look carefully. Uh, but I, I, I guess it was a publicity photograph put together for the benefit of the uh, of the company. You can see there there is a mixture of age and experience in that uh, in that troupe, who are wearing what is typically Cheshire uh, outfits, uh, head scarves, the sashes the men are wearing across their shoulders. Um, the girls wear a, 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 a white dress um, with a, with an overskirt over it, usually, which you can you can see. Uh, they're all holding shillelaghs, as they're known in this area, or shakers or pom poms. Um, and um, uh, the team are obviously proud of what they've achieved so far. I've included this on the back of my book because I'm I'm very very grateful to the Morris Federation for sponsoring this publication. It's enabled me to get this uh, done at, a, at a, a price I think is reasonable. And um, it's uh, it's been very, very helpful. Uh, it's, it's I think, as many of you will know, it's not a cheap thing to self-publish a book. Uh, it's uh, There's quite a lot to, to do and the price of paper and everything's go going through the roof. So it's an expensive outlay uh, and, and this has been very helpful. I'd also like to give public thanks to a couple of people um, Duncan, Duncan Broomhead, who's provided me with lots of help and support and information uh, and read an early draft of this book. Uh, and um, Peter Beeran, who read a very late draft uh, in order to give the Morris Federation some feedback uh, on uh, whether it was worthwhile uh, sponsoring this book. And um, he gave me too some very constructive criticism, which I've taken on, took on board in putting the book together. My objectives, I've got quite a lot to get through, quite a lot of slides to get through, um, So, but uh, I uh, would, would like to give you some understanding of the origins in, in Morris dancing in Trafford, a very brief uh, look at it. Consider the context of, of the dancing in the 20s and 30s um, and, and the implications of competitive dancing uh, in, in the context of carnivals. To look at different ways in which Morris developed in, in Two, two main centres of population, that's uh, Altrincham and Stretford. Uh, to give you some idea about what the Morris dancing looked like, I have some, some clips of film from the uh, from Northwest Film Archive, some of which are not available on the pods in the, uh, in the library. And to share, to share with you some of the outcomes of research that have intrigued or surprised me. Map of Trafford. Um, I presume, assume people know where on the map Manchester is, uh, but um, it's up there in the top right hand corner of this, this map. Uh, so Trafford joins right onto Manchester uh, uh, City, City Council, City um, Authority, and is one of the local authorities in Greater Manchester. Um, it was formed in 1974 by local government reorganisation. And that uh, line that runs, squiggly line that runs across the middle of it is the River Mersey, uh, which flows into the Manchester Ship Canal uh, and becomes canalised uh, 
on its journey down towards towards Warrington and the sea. Uh, the, 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 the red bits are roads, um, the motorways there, M62 at the top and the um, M M56 at the bottom. Uh, the M60 Manchester Ring Road is running through the middle of it there. And the A56, which runs north to south, which is the Roman Road that ran from Chester to, to uh, Mamukium, uh, the Roman Fort at Manchester. The places on there are places I will mention uh, in the course of uh, the, 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 the talk. Okay. Uh, sources, I'll say a brief, brief word about sources. I, I must acknowledge the, the work that uh, previous Morris researchers have done on this area and, and the, the, the area of North, North Cheshire particularly. Um, but noticeably, much of it was carried out quite a long time ago. Um, quite a lot of it's in the 80s and some of it is a lot earlier than that. Newspapers have been incredibly useful. Um, both the British Newspaper Archive and I've spent many hours looking at uh, microfilm news newspapers uh, on very antiquated machinery in various uh, um, local studies and uh, re uh, record offices around uh, around the area. Uh, they, they're particularly helpful because they give you the names of troops and when they're active, the names of dancers and the organisers, uh, information about costumes sometimes, some sort of description of the dancing occasionally, uh, dis description of processions and Rose Queen ceremonies and the part played by Morris in those. The results of, of competitions, that's enabled me to, uh, in the book, to try and reconstruct the seasons of each of the teams in our area. Um, and sometimes pictures of troops, often not particularly good quality, I'm afraid, because of the uh, nature of the photo photography at the time and, and the digitisation. Uh, I must say, going back to the, the previous research, the most useful aspect of that uh, has been the, the, the works uh, by um, Charton Ed and Edwards, which is in the Chester archives, the sources like that, and the Morris archives themselves, like uh, Manchester Morris, uh, Point and Gemma's, uh, Bolin Morris, um, which have, have, have got uh, notes of interviews of dancers and, uh, and, and, and trainers. That provides really interesting information. Archives are incredible. Uh, the stuff that's available in, in, in them, uh, I, I've been uh, stunned at what I've been able to find uh, in, in Trafford archives, uh, particularly, but and it and, and in others. Um, minutes of meetings and councils and so on, memoirs, all sorts of things. My, my uh, most amazing source, I think, has been the National, uh, the Northwest Film Archive at, uh, at MMU, based at the Manchester Central Reference Library. Um, they've been absolutely amazing in providing me with uh, access to things that have not yet been digitised, um, uh, uh, providing me with uh, stills for the uh, book and uh, providing me with digital films for showing today. But there are other film archives, as people know, the BFI, Pathé, the Morris Spring Archive and ver various other bits and pieces. And of course, family history sources, the usual things, censuses and uh, Birth, birth, marriage and death registrations, the electoral roll, all those kind of things, bits of military service, enable, have enabled me to find out something about the dancers, the individual dancers. The newspapers will often give you a list of, of names of the dancers, well occasionally, not often, um, and it's been really interesting to try and work out who they are and uh, see what we can find of their, their lives. And I, I thought really this would help to give a um, a stronger picture of the social history of the uh, uh, the subject. Things that have, some of the things that have intrigued me. Um, there's there's scant evidence for pre twentieth century Morris in Trafford, and I'll, I'll flip through that in in, in a moment. Um, I was surprised that there are different parts of development in in different parts of the borough, um, but one part of it is Lancashire and one part of it is Cheshire, so perhaps I should have expected that. Um, there's a very close link you'll see between Morris troops and entertaining dancing troops in Trafford. Um, many, many people danced in Morris and entertaining teams, same people, as we'll see as we, we go through. I expected there not to be many males involved after the First World War um, from some of the things I'd read uh, from the past, but in fact, 
there are a great deal uh, of, of males involved and adult males, uh, not just uh, not young boys, uh, in Trafford, particularly in the Altrincham area, uh, right up until about 1936. I probably shouldn't have been a surprise um, if I'd known a bit more about things like um, Holmes Chapel dances, um, Goose Tree and, and, so, and some of those where you've got men, men dancing to, to quite late. Uh, but these were troops that have been, been well established before uh, World War I, um, which, which the, the Altrincham troops were not, as we'll see. The troops competed uh, most weekends and, uh, and, and, and the travel was considerable. Uh, we've got them going north, south, east and west, um, south as far as, as Stafford, uh, north as far as uh, Morecambe, um, at west towards Chester and east towards Buxton. So, so it's quite a considerable, because there are no motorways at the time, it's quite, quite uh, uh, a, a great deal that went on. And you're, those of you that have seen the book will, will see that there are competitions on pretty much every weekend and the, the troops are, are participating pretty much every weekend. What I wanted to look at too was the impact that competition had on the dancing. Um, things like professional dance teachers who who appear in the background um, as time goes on through this uh, this period uh, the effects that um, of rules and, and judges and I was also interested to find out who uh, enabled the Morris dancing to take place because there's always has to be um, as Sue Allen pointed out I think uh, when she was talking about the Cumbrian uh, Morris a, a little while ago there always has to be some some people in the background and some of the ones in this area were in the in the background behind teams for an awful long time a quick look at our origins of Morris. Uh, as you would expect, um, it has its roots in this area in uh, wakes and rush bearing. Uh, these these are nearby parishes to um, to Trafford. I've taken the distance from Sale, which is about the middle of, uh, of of Trafford, to give you an idea of how far away they are. You can see the most of them within walking distance. Um, the uh, all of these here have some uh, evidence for Morris dancing alongside uh, rush bearing, rush carts uh, in in the area. Uh, the evidence from the nearby uh, these nearby parishes is quite strong compared with what you'll see in Trafford. You might be surprised that Nutsford's not there. Um, Nutsford uh, didn't didn't have. Uh, a rush cart as far as we we, we know. Uh, its church was rebuilt in 1744, so that may have an, have an effect, uh, be a factor. Um, the, the May Day didn't start till 1864 and that Morris dancing was not uh, actually um, included in the, the, the Lutzford until 1878 when, when Gorse Hill took, took part. But there is there is plenty of evidence around uh, and most of it, some of it goes back to 1750 and uh, and, and beyond. Lim gives us the best uh, uh, e example, I think, of the most information in, in, in uh, the, this area, and it's pretty close to Altrincham, uh, um, which uh, uh, yeah, it actually was part of the Altrincham parliamentary constituency um, and the Paul Law Union. Uh, so it's perhaps not surprising that there's, there's quite a bit of information in this area. And there are Lim, as they were in 1899 and 2021. And this picture in 2021, comes from the May Queen that, that year, which was held in September. It was the, you know, the, the pandemic uh, year, perhaps explains why the crowds aren't quite as big as they used to be. But this picture actually graces a jigsaw puzzle, a puzzle that uh, has been produced by Lim Heritage Centre this year. And I'm, I'm right in the middle, just above um, the, the Jeff Bibby, the Betty's uh, uh, head. Uh, I, think, I think I'm two pieces of the jigsaw. Um, so uh, we've, we've been immortalised in Jigsaw this, this, this year. But Lim has, uh, has certainly been danced since 1817. And it's a tradition that was revived um, by Jeff Bibby's uh, research in, in the 1980s. And um, we, we have newspaper accounts going back to the 1840s. And um, it, it's a, a, you know, a, a long, long standing tr tradition. In the local area, what do we know? Well, there is some, some indications. Both Flixton and Stretford 
appear in an, an, an advert from the Manchester Mercury in 1788, uh, which carried an advert for Flixton Wakes, a dramatic performance at the Theatre Royal in Manchester, uh, with, with, a, with a garland danced by the lads of Flixton, Ermston and Stretford, etc. Not sure who etc. was. Um, so garland dancing appears at, at those, um, both uh, there's an indication uh, at, at Flixton that there were garlands removed from the church uh, by the church wardens um, pay, paying for it. Uh, there's reference being at Stretford for, for drink at, the, at taking the garland to church. And Sir Bosdin Leach, who was the, one of the mayors of Manchester and one of the people behind the uh, Manchester Ship Canal, uh, his recollections of a decorated turf cart accompanied by Morris Dancers in Stretford sometime in that period, between 1836 when he was born and 1909 when he wrote it down. Warburton, a uh, small parish um, over on the west, uh, is... Um, has been uh, has, we have indications of Morris dancing there and and rush bearing um, in 1876, 1766 a payment by church wardens for the rush cart which had, the note it's noted in the in the um, in the accounts that it was admitted the previous year so I think they were just catching up. But Bowden, which was a huge parish um, in in this area and included Altrincham and various other places. We know there were wakes, but there's no evidence for, for, for rush bearing, despite we've got uh, um, written reports of rush bearing going back to the 1830s in, in, in Bowdoin. Um, and likewise at um, Ashton on Mersey, there are wakes, but no evidence for rush bearing. Um, and both those are, um, are ancient parishes, uh, uh, um, Bowdoin pre-conquest, uh, as, as probably was Ashton on Mersey. Uh, May Day in Bowdoin, an artwork. Uh, those of you that have seen Mike Heaney's book will have seen this in 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 there. Uh, shows Morris dancing, but um, the problem is I don't think it's at Bowdoin, or if it is, there's nowhere in Bowdoin that it uh, exactly replicates. And um, I don't. So I'm pretty certain it's not May Day uh, with with a rush cart on it. Uh -huh. Uh, the V and A tell me it's had this title since they've had they've had the uh, the, the painting since eighteen eighty six, but I think um, it's by by Warwick Brooks, a Salford born artist, um, painted somewhere in the mid nineteenth nineteenth century. But it's uh, it's pen and pen and sepia. <laughs> if it were in Bowden, the church would be over to the left above the horses, and um, it's uh, it, and the church church was there in that period. There, it does appear to be a church right in the mid mid um, mid background, um, but it's not where it should be if it is actually Bowden. The pub, there is a pub with a big. There was a pub with a big tree outside. There's a pub still there. The big tree's gone, uh, called the Griffin. Uh, Peter Peter Beeren pointed out to me because um, I've I suggested in the book that the uh, the author was perhaps uh, employing. Um, his uh, artistic license rather liberally. Um, P Peter Beeren pointed out to me, it looks as though it's above the door of the pub, the, the landlord's name is W. Brooks, Warwick Brooks, the artist. So I don't think we can take this as clear evidence for Morris dancing at Bowdoin. The dancers themselves look a little bit like the, um, as far as their costumes are concern concerned, the limb dancer dancers with all their ribbons uh, on that run down from their hats, which is just as our costumes are today. Why is there a difference between Trafford and Surrounds? The answer is uh, it's not really clear. Uh, the, the Trafford townships began to be absorbed uh, from 1850 onwards. The, the, the railways uh, reached out to uh, Altrincham, um, in 18, 1849. Um, so so uh, that ran right through the, the, the borough um, and started perhaps to, to, to uh, that, that encouraged the housing development. Um, Industrialisation was accelerated by, by um, the Broadheath development, the, the Ship Canal and, and Trafford Park. Um, so, so there's quite, quite a lot going on quite quick, quite in a quite a short period. Uh, between 1850 and, and 1900. 
And as you probably know from the urban press tended to concentrate on the downside of the wakes, things like drunkenness, rowdiness, animal cruelty, criminal behavior, weird pastimes like gurning through a, through a horse's um, um, bridle and all sorts of strange, strange things gone. And um, published quite a lot of letters showing the indignation of the uh, middle classes about how they couldn't go to church on Sunday and because the, the ceremonies were being disrupted by all these rowdy drunks in Bowdoin. Uh, if you knew Bowdoin today, you don't see rowdy drunks around there uh, very much. Church reconstruction. Uh, Bowdoin was rebuilt in, in 1860. Um, and the church warden thinks that uh, the, the, the records went, the, 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 sorry, the current archivist thinks that the records went out with the skip. Um, it's uh, Ashton on Mersey was rebuilt in the 1870s uh, and, and a lot of replacement ta uh, reconstruction done at the, uh, in that church uh, between 1870 and uh, 1886. And, and there's no there's no church wardens account surviving for that church. So that may be where the where problem lies. And then um, the arrival of the boards of health as the first form of uh, local government see the beginning of the end of the wakes. Um, Altrium's Board of Health was 1851, Sale 1867, uh, Stratford 1868. So uh, those all became urban district councils in 18, 1894. And um, it's quite clear they wanted to clamp down on the activities that went on during wakes, weeks, um, but the, the blocking up of the roads and everything else that happened. The essential information that's lacking uh, before before World War One is actually how did they dance? There's no notation. Uh, there's no no images of or film of dancing. No interviews. Um, no. The descriptions in the dance in in the press are usually concentrated on how weird it was. So Morris dancers in their quaint dresses and executing their peculiar dances, um, or written in a very high flown flown language. It's like um, their exhibition of the Terpsichorean art showed how carefully they'd been trained. Morris dancers will dance their sprightliest measures and so on. It's a very formulaic, uh, the, the newspaper reports seem of, of, of carnivals or any, any, any sort of Morris event seem to be very formulaic in the way they are written. Uh, the one that amuses me most, I think, is a, one from, from, from Lim from 1896. The three troops of Morris dancers paraded the village on Saturday. But the dancers seem to lack go compared with the wild caperings of former years. Well, it doesn't really tell you much about the dancing, apart from, like many of us, uh, we lack go these days. So it's difficult to draw firm conclusions about continuity and influence from the 19th century um, uh, and before on, on the dancing that took place between the wars. Carnivals. Carnivals uh, in this area, carnival type events in this area start appearing from the 1880s. Uh, there are just some of them there. Um, kind of a May Queen event in Sale, which lasted a few years with a big procession, um, floral carnivals. Stretford Rose Queen pageant, which becomes the, 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 the famous Stretford pageant, uh, which continues into, into 2011. And I think the costs of running it just, uh, uh, and the cost of policing it, particularly in the roads, uh, in the streets, um, put an end to it. But uh, small events were going on throughout uh, throughout the area. Um, but one of the one of the fates, um, Florrie Warren of the Esperance Club, uh, turned up. Uh, it was obviously booked, I think, to turn up, organised to turn up. It was it was organised by the church in Bowden uh, at. Um, and did some demonstration and taught what appear to be local people from the list the list of names uh, there, but some of the some of the names have not I've not been able to locate uh, from censuses. So I imagine they may be people who were involved with the Esperance Club. I'm not I'm not certain. Um, as well as as well as these things, because locally there were lots of May, May Queen events. I've mentioned mentioned Nutsford, uh, but there were the, the May Queens in. Uh, at over near Winsford, Holmes Chapel, uh, Wheelock, um, in Lancashire, uh, near near this area, at Worsley, and uh, Lowton near Wigan, that uh, were all happening in the 18, 1880s, 1890s. 
The purpose of the ones in Trafford were to raise money for local causes. Some included healthcare, but some building of new schools, building at Stratford, it was to build a new church in, in the, the Gorse Hill area of, um, of um, Stratford. After the war, uh, there's a, ch tends to be a bit of a start with uh, peace celebrations. Um, Stratford started with a peace celebration in 1919, and the village of Warburton had a, had its own sort of peace peace uh, uh, rose queen, which didn't which didn't continue after um, after 1919. Um, the, these uh, new new urban carnivals uh, that were starting around the area were, were not uh, were not unique to Trafford by any means, and uh, there were a lot of, it's part of a movement, I guess, uh, that um, spread through throughout the area. A lot of other ones at uh, places like Crewe, Wormslow, um, Half near, near Northwich, Sandbatch, Winsford, that were all established round about this, this time. Uh, dancing competitions appeared at these. Uh, Sale was the first one to have one in our area in 1923. Altrium had one in its first year, not to be outdone by Sale. Um, Ermston uh, it appeared in 1935 and the, the village of Partington, which is out towards Lim, um, was, was started at least 1923 with, with dancing going on in 1930. Stretford Pageant, uh, uh, on the other hand, didn't start dancing as uh, a dancing competition until 1931, um, quite late. This, these were mainly for local causes, um, healthcare issues, of course, uh, the, the demands upon which in, in the post-war period were, were significant. Um, I was amazed reading through the local papers at how many motor accidents uh, appeared in Trafford um, in, in, in the period after, after the war. I suppose the traffic was being to, being to increase and people weren't that aware of how dangerous motor vehicles were, perhaps when they're crossing the road and so on. But uh, the aftermath of war, um, you know, the on ongoing injuries and uh, disabilities. I, I did a lot of research on medal winners in, in, in Trafford, World War I medal winners, and a lot of the, uh, the people were, were, were dying uh, in, well into the 20s of, of their injuries um, or were unable to work because of their um, disabilities. So I think, I think carnivals were really there perhaps to provide some good diversionary acti activity. Um, we, you, you, we know about uh, the influ influenza pandemic and economic, the economic depression and large scale unemployment and so on after the war, which affected this area, uh, affected the, the, the North particularly badly because of the, it affected coal and cotton. The features of carnivals in Trafford, well, I, th I think they were very much influenced by the model uh, developed at, at Nutsford and, and to some extent at Crewe. Um, people from, from Trafford went in there thousands to Nutsford uh, because the railway line ran straight there, uh, which was one of the reasons why things perhaps didn't develop in, um, in, in Trafford before the, uh, before the, war, the war. And um, the model, I think, was 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 copied and and, and used. They were organised by, by by the civic authorities. That means um, there's a lot in a lot about them in the meet, minutes of meetings of the local councils. They set up separate committees um, in in order to to uh, decide what they were going to do. And Altrim had twelve committees in 1929 for various things. Um, in, 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 including the, in, the entertainment and various other things. If it wasn't them, it was the health boards who were trying to raise raise money uh, because they, they they weren't directly linked to to um, the local councils. In some um, the hospital boards weren't weren't uh, directly linked in some places. Uh, we often find they were staged with other events. Uh, those are some of the kinds of things, uh, sports. Um, I mean, Chester's the famous one, the Chester Autumn, Sm Autumn Sports and Carnival uh, outside outside Trafford, but um, it, they, all kinds of things were put on with them. They were enormous. Um, in 1926, 30,000 visitors came to, to, to Altrigham for the Carnival, a town with a population of under 21,000. So it's uh, it more than doubled. Uh, obviously, put great strain on 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 the police and and the organisers to um, uh, keep uh, things running smoothly. 
you do find the odd court case appearing uh, following the carnivals, uh, mostly by from light light fingered people who circulated amongst the crowds. The processions were were, were also massive, and 1923 sail was a mile long its procession, but it covered it covered over three and a half miles. Uh, in in 1928, Altrincham attracted 54 dancing troops for its uh, procession, and, and uh, it used four, four starting points to get its procession underway in 1924, and I think that probably uh, continued. And its procession in 26 was two miles long. It's the sort of thing that the local papers love to report. Um, and Wilmslow procession uh, nearby, uh, Wilmslow took two hours to complete in 1929, and the crowd stood there and watched it right the way through. But the organisers needed to innovate in order to keep the crowds coming. They had to keep the crowds coming to collect the money and um, to raise the funds. Uh, so all sorts of things uh, went were introduced. Uh, I mean, uh, one, um, one show in the area at, uh, at Poynton, it was a horticultural show, but they actually had um, rodeo riders uh, from the Isle of Wight, of all places. Um, who, who were brought in to, to, to interest the crowds, the kind of thing just keep, keep them coming. But the dance competitions were popular and uh, they did bring crowds in um, and kept, kept them watching till quite late in the evenings. They became increasingly expensive to stage and uh, in my book I've given some examples of uh, the way costs rose. Um, just just hiring the bands for, for a start to, to, to play for the uh, processions and the Morris competitions would cost a lot of money. Um, th they started to decline towards the end of the period uh, up to the Second World War. Um, the, the reports in the newspapers always start with the weather and uh, quite often it's carnival rained off or um, it didn't, the weather didn't dampen the spirits of the carnival revelers or something along those lines. And so if that happened, uh, poor weather, it, they did, wouldn't, re wouldn't meet their fundraising targets and they had to um, the bigger the carnivals became the more the, the more expensive they were to put on um, the more safety measures they required and so on and once one was over you've got to start working on the next one and uh, it took an awful lot of the resources of, of, of local authorities to keep these running what's the role of, uh, of Morris here they Morris dancers took part in the procession. In fact, uh, the rules of some of the carnivals uh, insisted if they were going to take part in the competition, they had to pay, take part in the procession because obviously the, the processions bring people out. They took a part in the ceremonial, the, the crowning of the Rose Queen. Sometimes they danced after the Rose Queen had been uh, been uh, crowned. Sometimes they they paraded uh, up to the, up to the stage with the, with the Rose Queen lined up they did it uh, at Stretford pageant for instance competition we'll talk about more in a minute uh, just display some of the some of our dance teams in this area were just booked to do a display they, there was a competition on but they didn't take part in it um, but they did do displays at the uh, uh, because they were um, competent and, uh, and, and good good sides and of course that function brings the crowds in uh, prizes were awarded both uh, sometimes in procession, uh, Wilmslow did this, that's probably why their, their procession lasted for two hours, uh, because the dancers had to stop and stop and dance uh, with the judges there. Um, but uh, perhaps they did that because they, they, the judges could better see the dancers in procession. But sometimes they were the prizes were awarded in the, the competition, uh, in a separate competition itself. Let's have a look, uh, the first of my films here. Um, this uh, is Sale and Ashton Carnival, 1927. It's a bit jerky, the film. Um, you'll see a number of Morris troops, um, Bollington, uh, um, some pony dancers in a minute. Let's, let's go through them as we go. This is, this is Bollington dancing in the dancing out again with their cloaks on. I have no idea who this troop is. Uh, 
the pony dancers, possibly Miss Deans from, from Nutsford. This is the retiring Rose Queen, who's going to uh, lay a wreath at the uh, War Memorial outside uh, Trafford Town, um, uh, Sale Town, Town Hall. Uh, remember, it's only 1927, it's not that long since the end of the war. The pony dancers watching. Various floats on lorries. Dignitaries. This is Cranford. The band playing for them as they march along. The children. Now the Rose Queen, Miss uh, Elsie Coops, does her bit at the uh, War Memorial. The report of this described it as a fine day. It doesn't look at it. I feel the wind's blowing. This is Mobley, male team. And certainly that team is. One of the jazz bands. Now, try, try including that in some of your routines, some of your Northwest teams. Sail Temperance Band, that is. More Morris Troops. So that film, I think, will give you some idea of the size of uh, the, the, the events and the number of troops that, um, uh, that, that appear and the different types of troops. Uh, and, and here we, we introduce the idea of entertaining troops. Entertaining troops appear very early. There's certainly entertaining troops called entertaining troops at uh, Crew Carnival, where prizes were awarded in 1902. Uh, they're a common feature of the carnivals and sometimes there are separate uh, competitions for for entertaining specifically sometimes it's called troops other than morris sometimes it's called fancy dancing um and uh, i think a particular influence on the type of dancing was 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 john tiller uh the, the tiller girl type of routines the pony dance uh, routines came from from tiller uh where three or four dancers usually female joined arms around each other and a taller dancer quite often a male uh danced behind linked to the front by by, by reins um which were ribbons usually and the dancers imitated the uh, trotting of ponies in a very very energetic energetic dance uh 
And there's some of the other types I, I could have included a, a, a variety of things uh, beyond beyond that. But there's just some of the things that occurred in carnivals in, in our area. Competition. Uh, as you know, competition was common in, in all the northwestern uh, counties, perhaps less so in um, in Lancashire than um, than it is in, in, in Cheshire. Um, jo Johnny Hazlitt's book would seem to indicate that from the uh, the last uh, the last book, there were fewer fewer competitions. The, the prize money was was uh, was was in incredible. I think this may have been a factor. Uh, I'm pretty certain it may have been a factor in encouraging troops to take up some form of entertaining to increase the, their odds of a prize. Um, £15 in 1924, according to the Bank of England's uh, inflation calculator, would be worth something like £725 in December 2022. Probably we can add a, a few quid onto that. Uh, now it's, uh, it's, it's February. Um, prize money was generally better for the entertaining troops than Morris. You know, a pound or two better for the for, for, for each troop. Why that was, I, I I don't know. Perhaps they wanted more entertaining troops. They wanted to encourage entertaining troops to to take part, uh, to give some variety. Um, expenses were sometimes paid to encourage participation. We know that happened at, at Wilms though in 1924. Uh, the Carnival Committee offered expenses that, uh, for troops that were travelling a distance. I don't know what they defined as a distance. But it increased the number of troops, uh, surprise, surprise, um, that took part in that, that particular year. But if you had a lot of troops, uh, it meant you got a very lengthy competition. And we, we know competitions went on till nine o'clock at night sometimes. So they often didn't start. Uh, the, the, the dancing competition didn't start till six. Um, but by all the time, all the rest of the stuff, had, the, the ceremonial had been gone through and uh, uh, the brass band uh, concerts and so on had been given. Uh, so uh, it uh, the, the length of it uh, obviously had a, was a factor in in uh, for the dancers because so, they would be turning up for a, a parade which perhaps started at uh, one. They probably have to be there a good hour beforehand to uh, um, to get ready and get uh, lined up in 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 in, in their uh, position. And, and then they're, they're there right until nine o'clock at night. And of course, some of them are quite young children. So it has quite a, a, a deal of, um, a, of impact on, on dancing. Um, they introduced age categories sometimes, sometimes under 14, sometimes under 16. And um, rules began to dictate uh, how things should happen. Um, for instance, uh, at Altrincham, the band music had to reach the judges two weeks before the before the event. Uh, I mean, that meant at least you had to get organised. Um, so it, it began to t determine things. So did judges' decisions, because if you if uh, you saw that uh, a particular team was getting good points from dancing in a particular way, if you're watching watching the dancing from the sides as a, as another team. Um, then uh, that would obviously affect what you did. Hartford Hospital fate here gives the idea what, what points were awarded for, for in 1914. Originality, dancing, costumes, marching and smartness. So it's not just dancing, particularly if uh, the Morris were dancing in, in, um, against, uh, in an open competition against um, entertaining teams. Uh, dancing to bands. Um, there's a lot of complaint about the limited range of tunes, particularly at Sale Carnival, um, they're saying that it's just boring. But um, we don't know anything, anything about how, how the teams practised. Uh, they probably practised to a concertina, in fact, and um, maybe they met with the band for the first time uh, uh, at the actual event. Um, Morecambe, Morecambe Carnival in 1935, the he he headline, on the, one of the headlines on the paper was too much blaze away. Um, they, they seem to have chosen that dance for, for dancing, but old number five, uh, um, 100 Pipers and Bonnie Dundee, these were the commonly, commonly, one, commonly danced tunes. 
uh, and then there's the practicalities of actually getting the pet the the, the, the uh, timing right the tempo uh, uh, i know in 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 um, more modern uh, um, Cornwall Morris, uh, where they where they use uh, record players uh, to to do it, you, you can use a variable speed device, and one of the dancers comes out, or so the leader comes out and dances in a stationary position to get to get the uh, the tempo right. I don't know how that worked with the brass band. Uh, we're not we're not certain. And we start to see professional uh, dancing teachers getting involved in, at Stretford Pageant, for instance. Professional dancers en entered teams into the competition. Um, and uh, some of the dance uh, um, organizers who um, uh, became professional dance dance teachers, we'll see that in a moment. This picture um, is Auction Carnival 24, and here they are gathering. And there's Morris dancers here, probably. Um, uh, this looks this looks like a, a, a behind the man with the stick is a Nutsford da dancer. It's wearing bell pads, which is relatively un unusual. But um, it says something about uh Nutsford's oh, the origins of the dancing in Nutsford uh the dancers are mixing with the band so have a look at uh, Stretford and and uh, uh, Altrincham then quite uh, quickly uh Stretford um was a fairly rural place you wouldn't think it now um it was known as Poor Campton uh because of uh, it pig farming and there's there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of fields and farms around. Some some functional more mid nineteenth century house, housing, which uh, it, it evolved from when the the, tr the railways went out there. Altrincham is a, a much older um, settlement, a larger settlement. Um, it's a it's a, a borough controlled by the Earls of Stamford, as the the, the um, from the manor at uh, Dunham Massey until eighteen eighty six. Uh, it's only five miles from Stretford, not not very not very far. Um, it's uh, but it, but there is quite a bit of difference between how they the, the, these um, sides uh, these uh, places developed. Uh, a lot of the cotton barons lived out to the south of Altrincham in, in large villas, and it was a very um, part of it. Parts of it were were very uh, very wealthy, very affluent. Parts of it were not. Um, and that we see industrial development in both these places. Stretford has some evidence of the early Morris dancing we saw from from Bosnian Leach's uh, stuff and uh, uh, the regular appearances quite early on in the Botanical Gardens on the lifeboat Saturday. But the main main development was at Gorse Hill, where the troupe was formed specifically for a key role in the procession and the crowning ceremony uh, at, at um, the pre runner the pre runner for. Um, Stretford pageant. An instructor was brought in to direct the troop. Someone came from Mr. J.S. Smith from uh, Longsight, whether it's Longsight Morris or not, I'm not, we're not certain, and whether he actually taught them. He says, it's the, it says quite clearly in the programme that he was, that, that Morris was directed by him. Uh, not quite certain what that means. In Altrium, um, there's very little evidence uh, from the 19th century, apart from the Utrington uh, team from Lim dancing at Sale May, May Day in 93. Uh, wherever they needed Morris, they imported um, the Alexandra Lady Morris dancers for the uh, um, Edward the uh, Seventh's coronation. And we've, we've seen the Esperance group coming in. Or they trained schoolgirls um, for special events like the coronations and uh, some, some of the fates. So all the all the troops in Altrincham were formed post 1920 specifically uh, for taking part in the carnivals and presumably winning prizes. And those are the Morris dancers from Navigation Road School in Altrincham at the coronation of George V. Um, quite strangely, um, they uh, they danced um, uh, Morris on Shepherd's uh, Shepherd's Hay and Morris off from Bidford, uh, but um, According to the program, but um, they've got sticks with 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 ribbons on here, so I'm not quite certain how the dancing was uh, took place. That uh, they had the 57 dancers named in the program. I think there's 36 on that particular picture. So they they, they got them out in in uh, uh, in, in their, their hundreds, and uh, they they took 
posed pictures of pictures of all the dances with which the, this coronation had very much a Merry England theme about it nationally and uh, and locally. The Stretford troops, Gorse Hill started in 1910 as an, an all male troop. Um, by the end of 1910, but it, it was it was a mixed troop and, and carried on to the early, early 70s. There were other teams. Uh, Stretford Prize Morris dancers who may uh, may predate Gorse Hill. They were known as Prize Morris dancers in 1925, but I've no no indication of how they became that. Although I, I do know some teams just decided to call themselves Prize Morris dancers without necessarily having won a prize. There were other Stretford teams uh, at late, later period, uh, Trafford Park teams, um, and Old Trafford. Uh, so these were uh, girls teams uh, uh, in the in the late, later period. The Trafford Park 1914 team appears to have been mixed children. Altrincham, uh, Bollington, uh, which was founded by um, Phyllis Hickson, who'd worked with Miss Dean and uh, Miss Pemberton at, um, uh, at Nutsford. Uh, I'll come to that in a moment. The Bensonian, founded by Eric Benson. Uh, I'll talk a bit about that in a moment. Ashfield, founded by, by Maggie Richardson, who lived in Ashfield Road, hence its name. Uh, Stamford, which was um, really a team which I think split off from the Bensonian. Um, Oldfield. Team seen by Maud Carpeles, um, were in in a, an area of the town slightly away from where the rest were, and and the liner type team that we've already seen, um, Stamford were founded by Frank Cottrell and Oldfield by Frank Clegg. Frank Clegg came from Mobberley. Yeah, Gorse Hill or, or, or all male, mainly teenagers in 1910, but some of those some of those dancers continued um, right the way through to, to 1913. Um, it became mixed to 14. They lost dancers to the war, um, both through injury and um, and death, and started up again after the war as an all female team, uh, and so continued to the 1970s. Uh, they did not uh, take part in Carnival Morris um, uh, until about 1960, late, late 1960s, I think. Trafford Park and Old Trafford, all female. Uh, Bollington was an all female troop. The rest of the Altrincham troops were mixed young adult troops and remained so. Usually 16 dancers, sometimes 12. There is the Bensonian trope with Michael Jackson's uh, watching that picture. I think appears in on your um, uh, your site uh, with the uh, with with all the Morris pictures on. Uh, it's the, the Bensonian troupe. It's not named as such on your site. Um, I've been meaning to let you know that. Uh, it's not a very good picture. It comes from the newspaper, as does the one underneath, and the, those, those other Bensonians at various carnivals. Uh, you can see their their outfits are very similar to those. Worn by line type, and that's Eric Benson, uh, who formed the site. He um, is there dancing, um, playing for Bolin Morris, uh, whom he joined in 1976 when Bolin were formed, and taught his dance to them. Um, he started life, um, as did the troupe, uh, as a um, acrobatic uh, troupe. Um, he formed he formed the Bensonian Club Swingers and. Uh, Pyramid formers, club swingers were not going out in Manchester on a Saturday night um, uh, in 1924 and, and performed sword swinging and uh, Irish jigs and things at Altrium. And he continued to train, train uh, young people uh, through the 40s and 50s. Uh, he was actually orphaned in, in, his, in his youth and, and uh, was um, brought up in the style cottage homes, which was uh, uh, Chawton Union. Uh, um, work, workhouse uh, um, uh, accommodation out at style. He died at Bolin practice illustrating his dance in 1978. Uh, Stretford Morris dancers, um, looking at the costumes, I'll look at it in a moment, uh, the, the style was in, in, influenced by the, the Pennine style. The boys using striped sticks with ribbons and the girls used handkerchiefs. And uh, a report from um, an interview with, with Mrs. Spackman, who was one of the one of the trainers in uh, 
uh, somewhere in the 80s, probably by Point and Jimmers, um, gives an indication of how they danced in the, the around the war time. She said they danced a Clog Morris type of dance in flat shoes, across their feet over when when stepping. And uh, after the war, continued to dance a Clog Morris with handkerchiefs with bells on three corners, which they swished. They didn't adopt shillelaghs until the early 1930s. Auction. The troupe starts a similar dance, which has its origins in Nutsford, northeast Cheshire. Um, they, the, their costume and, and what they used was very influenced by the earlier Cheshire troops and the Old Chapel. And they, they, they danced a skip step with high knee lift and arms overhead. Uh, this is the Gorse Hill Morris troupe in 1913. Uh, in an area of Gorse Hill, you can see the, the costumes, the boys' sticks, boys wearing. Uh, breeches and uh, the girls wearing um, waistcoats or bow rows and sashes and they've got handkerchiefs in their hands with 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 bells on um i would think more influenced by the pennine traditions uh, if we compare them with this picture from um, 1936 at Ermston carnival for instance it's the old old and bright sparks clog morris uh it's a it's it, it bears more similarity to that than it does to the, the cheshire um, troops. Mr. Bertels, uh, an, an amazing man, I'd say, uh, uh, all the things that he did, um, became a dance teacher. Um, he trained as a dance te teacher um, and um, he, he trained this troupe um, after the Mr. Mr. Smith, if Mr. Mr. J. S. Smith was involved in the training. He was a uh, very important in the pageant, uh, secretary of it uh, through, through that and, and um, he was found a member of the of the, of the National Old Age Pensioners Association. He had an incredible all, all round. So I think the sort of continuity that people like him uh, provided, him and Mrs. Spackman, who I mentioned just now, uh, kept things going very much. This is a picture that's not in the book. Um, it's one that I discovered, I've discovered since hide, hiding in plain sight in Trafford Local Studies. Um, it's circa 1929, uh, but. Look at what they're, they're holding in their hands. They're not holding shake, uh, shakers, not holding shillelaghs. They're dressed in similar outfits. The skirts have changed, obviously, as time moved on. Um, but they are they are holding handkerchiefs um, in in their hands. So and this has really been a bit of a sort of um, a, the the missing piece of the of the of the, the picture. Uh, there appear to be something like thirty six girls here in this troop and a leader. Um, this is before they danced competitively. This is 1939 from the pageant programme. Here they are, a competitive troupe. You can see that they've got their trophies there. A number of them are a highly successful troupe. And um, they have now got their shakers. And this is 1964, showing how, how continuity uh, in, in costume uh, when uh, this is this is around the time that they started to dance uh, um, Car Girls Carnival Morris, but uh, probably not until the uh, later later years of the nineteen sixties. Uh, judging by what I've found from um, some uh, dancers who danced with the site, uh, but this obviously it just just changed hairstyles and skirts to reflect the swinging sixties. Cheshire style, uh, an unidentified troupe from Stock Stockport. Um, with the over skirts with bells on the end. Uh, you can see the uh, different coloured shillelaghs. I don't know who this troupe is, I'm not certain which, which one it is uh, in dancing. And here's male costumes. It says the Ashfield dancers at uh, Wilmslow Carnival. Um, and I think the uh, uh, either I mean, Scott or an apprentice following the leader, uh, and uh, leader distinguished by a pair of um, sashes. And um, they've, they've got the characteristic binding up their legs uh, over there, what I think are probably cricket flannels. Uh, so it's a very simple uh, comp costume in the Cheshire style. Uh, if we make some comparison of this, uh, the, 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 the community of uh, Stretford was, was a, one described in the Stretford Telegraph as based on the spirit of cooperation, socialism, liberalism and conservatism. Um, they were mostly artisans working there, um, 
uh, people who were working on the docks in the in Trafford Park companies and so on with strong religious uh, commitment to, uh, there's a lot of family commitment to the pageant we find the same same family names occurring and dancers have usually played another role um, in, in the pageant before they get to dance so we've got this strong continuity Oxford on the other hand but four or five troops came uh, at any one, one time. Um, most of them came from a small area of the town. Uh, they too uh, ca came from working class families, essentially, but more labourers dancing uh, in, in, in this team than there were in, in Stretford slightly. And there are a lot of schisms in the, in, in, in the, uh, the, the troops. Um, the, the uh, so Dennis Whitney, uh, the nephew of Mrs. Richardson, uh, who, who ran Ashfield, left the Bensonians to join Ashfield. Um, there, there must have been some sort of leadership issues, I think. Uh, Frank Clegg, who taught the Mobley dance, the Bensonians, um, may have danced with them when he moved from Mobley to Altrincham, uh, formed his own troupe at Oldfield in 1928, generally lasted a couple of seasons. Uh, Dennis Whitney then danced with the Stamford troupe and led it on some occasions. We've got some dancers who danced with a couple of troops, at least on, on the names lists. And um, to top it all, a, a report of the, the Chester Chronicle in 1930 re revealed that the line attack troop, uh, which was started in 1930, was partly composed of Bensonians who competed at the, the same event in 1929. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, all sorts of, of schisms going on in, in this. Uh, not unfamiliar, I think, in Morrisides. Uh, entertaining troops. Scorsill had an entertaining troupe in the in uh, around the First World War called the Stretford Old English Dancers. Uh, some again, some of the same family names dancing, and then they they didn't enter the the uh, entertaining section uh, of competitions till till the uh, 1937. Altrincham had lots. Ashfield and the Bensonian started as entertaining troops before taking up Morris dancing, uh, and you've got. Them. The Bensonian started as club swingers, um, entertain Ashfield appear in 1924. Uh, their pony dance troupe um, was, was very successful and, and, and lasted for quite a lot of time, 29 to 30. And Ashfield actually renamed their cabaret troupe each year pretty well for different seasons. So uh, whether that was a way of um, people, th people thinking it was a new troupe coming along or what, I don't know. Some of the other troops uh, had pony dance troupes. Bollington danced hornpipes and other troop dance dances. The only liner type were not involved as entertainers. And that's the Stretford uh, Old English Dancers. Uh, not quite certain when it is. Uh, it says Stretford expects on the top, so it's got to be somewhere around the war, I think. Um, it, it may, may in fact be 1919, but uh, it's not, I'm not certain. It's at, at Longford Hall. The Ashfield Black and White Pony Dancers. Harold Hollingworth, who's the leader of Ashfield, is uh, second from the right in the front row. Uh, and you can see that these are wearing, the men are wearing their Morris trousers. Um, and I think, you know, they, they designed their costumes to be able to do quick changes, put a hat on, put a waistcoat on uh, and get on in, in competition uh, with a different, a different competition. Uh, that's Mrs. Richardson crouched down at the bottom there, who formed this troop. Um, this is one of them, uh, one of the troops. This is the Lido girls from Stockport Carnival. Don't look like Morris dancers at all here. Um, they're like a, a girls dancing troupe in costume of the time, 1932. And this troop were dancing at the same time as the Morris dancers at Point and Horticultural Show in 1935, but they did a kind of tap routine um, with some high kicking. Uh, so the, the, the Morris dancers, so, some of the girls were involved in, in, um, in, in both these troops. Um, this is Harold Hollingworth, uh, who, who was the dance teacher of Ashfield, who was involved with dance all through his, uh, through his life, uh, from, from hobby to becoming a professional and opening his own dancing school in, in Altrincham, which is still going today um, under a different name. And he moved from Altrincham uh, in 1936 roundabout to Fort Revive the Gaskell Troop. 
uh, he, he worked as a dance teacher for the Manchester and Salford Cooperative Society for their galas and trained the troops, and he was a judge at Nutswood Royal May Day. The dancing. Uh, it's all a version, in, in Octrium, um, it's all a version of, of, of um, the Mobley dance, brought, by, brought to Octrium probably by Frank Clegg from Mobley, taught to the Bensonians. The Mobley dance derives from Nutsford, um, and that dance derives from um, uh, the, the Cranford troupe at, at, at Nutsford, who'd seen over Peaver dancing at May Day uh, before the First World War, um, Dorothy, Doris Pemberton, Doris Dean. Um, Mabel and Annie Pemberton taught it to, the, to Mobley in uh, 1925, and the over Peaver dance is linked to a number of earlier dances. So the Morris dancing has, has origin in, in carnivals. Uh, the Morris, Mobley Morris notation uh, in, in the form as it was in 1926, um, twos, fours, a wave in line, an outside cast and chain on side, more like country dancing figures in some uh, than perhaps uh, the, the, the Northwest Morris uh, from the Pennine areas. Um, and perhaps this would illustrate it as well as anything. This film, uh, filmed by Duncan, um, uh, it shows the Mobley Morris dancers in, 19, in 2016. And this is about as close as you can get to how, how uh, dancing took, took place in, in Altrincham in, in the um, interwar years. I'll just show a, a brief clip of this. And um, Joy Parks uh, was down on the list. I don't know whether she's joined us. I haven't, I haven't been able to keep up with who's been joining, uh, but she, she trained this troupe. And I'll just uh, show you a short second. <laughs> Take it from about here. <laughs> Waving overhead. <laughs> Delays. So that gives you a, a, an idea. Just compare it with the next, next slide. This is 1935 showing Gorse Hill Morris dancers. Just a short clip. Dancing into a diagonal crossover. Chanel is held above heads. Cast up, cast down the middle. And the chain on the side, just as the wobbly dancers were, were doing. The main difference is the stepping, which has more in common with the Pennine tradition than it does with the Cheshire. Right, just quick look at the Placings at carnivals of the local troops to give some 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 idea of uh, uh, what um, what what the outcome was. That the Gorse Hill were very successful, dancing between thirty two and thirty nine. Um, Ashfield were very successful uh, between twenty nine and thirty six. You can see this is the placings in in in, in carnivals. Uh, the old film team. team didn't last very long, uh, probably because they didn't get many placings. And, and it would have cost quite a bit to keep a troop going, uh, just least of all just paying for travel to get to places. Uh, so it gives you an idea of uh, how the troops were. And if we look at the entertaining troops, uh, Ashfield won dozen surprises uh, in, in entertaining. Gorse Hill were not so successful in that field. 
uh, neither were the other troops, but they did they did win uh, some some prizing in in, in in what they were doing. So, quick look at the legacy. Um, troops of uh, girls and women have been dancing since the start of the twentieth century. And, 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 and does that does that make them girls, Morris, girls carnival Morris troops? I don't know. And in Trafford, Bonington, Gorse Hill, all female troops were active very early on. Uh, throughout the 20s and 30s, the troops are dancing together. Male, um, they dance, um, and male and female dancers dance in both types of troop. Uh, but male, male Morris dancers appear to stop after 1936 or 7. So quick look, there's a Bol Bollington in 1926. You can see some hornpipe dancers at the back of them, part of their troop. They're entertaining ent dancers. Uh, an unidentified troop at uh, Sail National Carnival in 29, dancing in a single line, perhaps rather more like the uh, girls' carnival team troops dance. But um, any judges amongst you will notice that uh, the footwork is uh, fall in, uh, in line. Uh, a film from 1933, girls casting from the top down the sides uh, from Amston, again dancing in, in two lines. So there's plenty of girls carnival teams dancing uh, in, in this area. Um, but because there's a variety of, of, of Morrison team dancing on, um, and, and because they're competing against e each other, dancers would see, and so would trainers, um, what features of other dancing attracted points. And I think what's happening over this period is a gradual change uh, in the style. Uh, we can see it uh, particularly in uh, Gorse Hill. Uh, we can see that they are dancing a Cheshire style of dancing, uh, apart from their footwork. Um, it's very much like um, what was danced, danced here. It's a gradual transition. So it's a kind of hybrid, if you like, of, of um, the Pennine, style in the northwest and the Cheshire style in the, in the northwest. Many troops adopt the shillelagh uh, and, the, and the, fi the figures. Uh, they add to figures, uh, they develop additional figures because they need to be innovative. And uh, Harold Hollingworth talks about the Oxo figure and how he, he liked that because he felt it, it demonstrated good dancing uh, in, in his, his troops. Um, Cheshire was the predominant style, I think, in the carnivals in the, but, um, uh, in the 20s and 30s, but we do see um, clogged, clogged teams uh, winning prizes from the early 1930s, uh, particularly from Oldham. And the girls' carnival shows some of the features of the Cheshire style, the shillelaghs, the flat shoes, the high knee lift, but it's evolved its own distinctive style, way it, which it works. Probably because of the rule book, and I'm sure Ian McKinnon, who's part of this group, can tell us more about that, and the way those rules are interpreted by the judges. I am doing some work uh, carrying on uh, to see what I can find out about what happened after um, the, the Second World War, and I've identified so far at least 45 girls' carnival troops active in Trafford between 1950 and 1990, and I'm sure I haven't got them all yet because I haven't really looked at 1950s in, in much detail yet. Um, so there's uh, there's lots of work to be done on Carnival. And I think what really needs to be done is, is somebody needs to start talking uh, to uh, individuals who, who danced, particularly um, in the period between 1950 and 2000, um, who danced and organised their dancing and try to find out something about them and uh, their stories before they're lost. Otherwise, I think we 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 won't we won't have um, a history uh, of, of this phase of dancing, and it's not a history. It's not a phase of dance, a phase of Morris um, that's in the public eye um, as much as um, Border and Cotswold and so on are are now, because the competitions take place now mostly um, in sports halls around the country. So I'll leave you with that thought. Uh, I've got a website where I'm 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 posting uh, post publication updates to research uh, www.shuffleback.co. Um, 
if you're interested in purchasing the book, uh, it can be done through YPD Books. You can do it through Amazon if you wish. Um, it's just that uh, Amazon take quite a chunk of the money. Um, uh, if, if you're not interested in that, uh, you might consider uh, my fundraiser with the Christie Hospital Charity, uh, which is, um, Christie Hospital has looked after my wife for the last four years. So uh, it's uh, very important for me. Thank you for listening. Right. Thank you, Richard. Fascinating talk. And um, we've got a few minutes left, but I don't mind staying later if people want to stay later yeah, and ask more questions. I'll just stop that's fine. Come back, pack in. I'm I'm sorry to have overrun there, uh, really. Oh no, you haven't overrun. Uh, oh, you yeah. found it. There you go. Okay. So, is there um, is there anything? In, we'll have a applause at the end. But is there anything in the chat, uh, Richard? I can see. Don't know if anyone has sent anything. Um, if not, if you'd like to, if people want to raise their hand and uh, ask a question, it's under uh, reactions. Raise hand. Oh, there we go. Mike Heaney, straight in. OK, um, well, thanks very much, Richard. Um, good talk. I do have your book. Oh, you can't Thank see you, Mike. I, I, and, I have uh, yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and um, can I say, having read your book, I think it's one of the absolute best books I've ever read. It is full of new and original and thoroughly well-researched material, and I'm totally overawed by it so thank you very much indeed for that and I'm glad to hear that you're going on and doing more because this is an area which is totally under researched and it's to me it's one of the most fascinating areas the way all of these styles of the Pennine style and the Cheshire style and everything else were merging together and mixing and cross-fertilizing each other dur during that period from about 1890 to 1940 whenever you want to put the end date still going on probably but um, I, I speak as a Stratfordian born and bred. And um, I remember when I was growing up in Stratford and uh, I used to walk through Gorthill every day on my way to school. But um, Lord, if I knew anything about Morris dancing then, so I totally ignored it. But what did strike me was that um, you know, in those days before Trafford was created, from my point of view, living in Stratford, Sale and Altrincham were a world away. You know, you didn't cross the Mersey much. Mm, and, that's right. And uh, so, I think, you know, what you've been looking at now is, in one sense, an artificial community of, you know, it's just the area you chose to research in. But that, what strikes me is that if anybody does anything else in this area for other areas, there must be tons of stuff out there, absolute tons. And that's a there is. call for someone to go and, anyone to go and research it in yeah. all the surrounding areas. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for an absolutely brilliant book. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I, I'm, I'm very flattered to hear that from you. Your, your book is is awesome. I'm, I'm working my way through it slowly. <laughs> thank, a, and I'm, I'm very interested to see we've got some... Board. It's a good doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be, a, it'll be a well used book, I'm sure. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Anyone else ask, would like to ask a question or give some comments to Richard? They're not known for being shy. Derek. Derek. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Richard. That was a very interesting talk and great to see those uh, film clips as well. Um, I'm just looking at the interwar period from a different perspective, dance-wise, and um, the the amazing thing about the interwar period was how popular dancing was. Uh, massive uh, uh, increase in the number of people dancing, dance halls being built, you know, left, right and centre, the Mecca uh, organisation sets up uh, dance halls in all the cities and so on. Um, you know, everyone's jazzing, foxtrotting, the modern waltz, uh, quick step, you know, tango, you know, it all carries on through the 20s and 30s. You get to the, the Lambeth Walk, becomes a massive dance, uh, popular dance and so on. And, and all of this is part of that massive interest in dancing. Uh, and very crucial with the popular social dancing that I've just mentioned is dance teachers. Um, yes. 
you know, te teaching people how to dance. That they want to take control over how people dance the waltz and the quick step and so on. They want to improve the quality of dancing. Um, and it will be interesting to know, um, you know, what overlap there is between the sort of dance teachers that you're referring to, teaching mainly children and, and quite young adults, uh, and the, the dance teachers that are um, um, members of the organisations that, you, you know, we're, we're, we're establishing what was known as the English style of ballroom dancing. Um, uh, and, and of course, in with all that ballroom dancing was competitions, exactly the same as the Carnival Morris, um, and um, and uh, displays uh, and so on at, um, in, in ballrooms, and trying to control the style. Uh, and as soon as you have competition, somebody wants to control the style. So, you know, there's all sorts of parallels in there um, between between this style and, and what was going on elsewhere. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Well, certainly uh, um, the, Cad the Cadmans, Mr. Cadman, and his, his, he had a dance school in Sale and it's still there now, um, him and his family. Uh, he was he was behind the dance competitions at Sale, which were were across the whole gamut of dancing, not just the um, the Morris and the entertaining troops. There yeah. were there were ballet things and all sorts of things at that. At that. And, and um, uh, he's still going. His school's still going in in, in Trafford, and and so is um, Harold Hollingworth, who who ran his own 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 dance school, and he he advertises for ballroom dancing in the in the local papers. Uh, mm. So I think there's some, there is some continuity, some link up with the, with the, with the Morris teams with with those. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Um, anyone else got any other questions or comments they'd like to to add? Duncan's thinking about it. <laughs> It's probably fed up with these, read it so much. <laughs> I think he's um he's still muted, so we can't hear him, but he looks like he wants to say something. Great. Unmuted now. Him? Okay, hi. Richard, great. Lots of new information for me, new films, information, photos. I I I envy your access to uh to that information it, it was it's great now in the 50s the low willington in cheshire was probably the last mixed carnival side and they, they were going on into um, the late 50s 60s and they were still doing the cheshire stepping but one of the dancers was telling me that the, the, the lancashire sides were doing what we might say call a polka step which would perhaps fit in with your lancashire cheshire divide even in uh, you know gorse hill to to others uh but the, the the cheshire sides as i understand it was still doing the uh what we might call the cheshire step yes yeah but it, it's i i guess the way the way it's developed into the North, the, the girls carnival has, has been through seeing both of these things really uh, it, mm. you know, it's just merged together yeah in in the carnival now that that is the only step but of course then they yeah. changed it as well depending on where they put the foot down they put it down in front uh to the side kick out before the you know the lifted the, and that step itself has is, is has evolved over uh several decades you know that's it it's still moving on and there's, there's more carnival sides in the northwest than there are uh folky sides you know folk i think might call them hobby morris but uh yeah but it's it's still it's it's still very popular i don't think it's perhaps as popular as it was but it's still massively popular uh in the northwest and it is community-based i remember talking to a lady in um goulburn in the 70s she wanted to form a side uh so she, she put up posters around goulburn and she got seven, over 70 girls to a first rehearsal you know and it, yeah. it this just it's it, you know it's uh i i think it's great and uh yeah it is under re, under research unfortunately Secretaries of various carnival organisations don't seem to pass information on it passes someone else. It's just been they're, they're thinking to the future all the time, aren't they? To the next, they're thinking more into the the next carnival, the next event, the next year, rather than looking back, which uh, 
the folky type Morris pipe does, which is unfortunate yeah. for us if we want to research it. I don't think the newspapers will be as forthcoming in the in, from the fifties onwards, uh, as far as girls' carnival is concerned. That the reports start to deteriorate towards the end of the thirties in terms of the detail. Mm. Uh, mm. It's mm. just the change in style of, lo of local newspapers that you can see starting from you know from mid thirties really. And mm. uh, but I do know that Trafford has got boxes and boxes of um, pi pictures of Stretford bits and pieces of Stretford pageant with lots of girls carnival teams in whom I, I, I doubt we, we can identify um, mm. so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some photographic uh, classification projects that are for them at the moment and um, it's mo mostly been looking at the photos from the Stretford and Ernston journal from the uh, um, 60s through to the, the the late 80s there's lots there's a lot in there in those those um that journal because it's uh, it, it, there was Flix and Carnival and um, uh, Partington and various other ones that were that were carrying on, as well as as well as as well as Stretford. So the, the, they're reported, but um, I think it's going to be identifying troops and all sorts of things. It's going to be quite difficult. It's pretty difficult yeah. anyway, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say I think yeah. also the um, the, uh, the the poor quality of the newspaper reports from later years. I mean, you mentioned about the, the uh, competitions going on till nine o'clock at night and people, you know, I'm betting that there's not much audience watching at that stage. The newspapers are interested in reporting what, you know, what, what their readers have seen, experienced, and it's got to be newsy for them. And they've probably all gone home to have their tea by that time anyway. Um, I mean, I even know, you know, I go to Nutsford most years uh, and uh, enjoy the dancing on the field afterwards. Um, but by the time they do the Maypole dance, which is sort of, you know, iconic imagery of of, uh, of Nutsford, there's hardly anybody watching around the arena um, because it's, you know, it's by, I mean, and that's only five o'clock at night. So five o'clock tea time. So it's, um, you know, it just doesn't get... Uh, I can understand why it doesn't get reported. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think some of the journalism is quite lazy in them. I think some of them just got out the report from the year before and crossed some things out and put some new 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 stuff in in some of them. Mm. There are reports of these competitions going on into the dark and having to do it to to car headlights and stuff like this. I think I think perhaps as well though that they might have been their their own worst enemy, but getting too many troops in. Mm. Uh, it's a, mm. it's a shame. Any more for any more? No, we met somebody from the uh, carnival community who told me that there was 13,000 uh, performers or people involved in Carnival Morris. Well, that's there's about the same number is involved in Morris and Sword Dancing in the UK. So it's mm. quite unbelievable how it's not people don't know so much about it as you say it's a lot of it's behind closed doors now isn't it anyway any more for any more no in that case if you'd like to unmute yourselves and give richard a round of applause yeah. thank you for listening thank you, thank you.